Nigerians have called for the diversification of our economy, making most of Nigeria's richest natural resources. For the next 30 minutes, take a close-up look at the path toward maximizing our country's richest resources and a vision for a bright new future for Nigeria. Oil and gas, working for all Nigeria. That the future of Nigeria is extremely bright. That Nigerians can do it and more to the point that with our combined cumulative effort that Nigerians will indeed do it. That we will take ourselves to the next level and beyond in terms of our economy. That we will become a country that is used as a measuring stick for other countries, not just in this region, but beyond. And that Nigerians everywhere will once again be able to hold their heads up with pride at their country and their countrymen, their economy and their leadership. The work ahead is critical for the future of Nigeria. Every Nigerian will be touched by the rewards and the proceeds from the oil and gas sector. And that is our intent. Because the development of Nigerian gas and oil are at the center of our country's standing and our interests in the international economic community. As our country's history-making Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Diazani Alison Madweke, works to advance industrialization in the oil and gas sector. And her first concern is always for the people of Nigeria. The entire gas industrialization uh, program should produce for this country up to one million jobs over the next three to four years. That is absolutely incredible. And all this has been done with the strong support and direction of President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. In less than a year, Mrs. Diazani Allison Madweke has made gas industrialization a key priority for the fortunes of Nigeria. As the Minister of Petroleum Resources appointed by President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, Mrs. Allison Madweke has helped change the face of Nigeria's oil and gas sector for the good of the country. In the gas sector, President Jonathan has empowered the Honorable Minister to aggressively pursue implementation of sweeping reforms in Nigerian gas pricing. Gas to power pricing has been revised to more sustainable commercial levels in order to provide incentives for sustained gas supply development and growth. Under President Goodluck Jonathan's very strong directive, we at the Ministry of Petroleum Resources have ensured that the scourge of fuel scarcity has become a thing of the past. We have shown that it is possible for Nigeria to have sustainable and continuous fuel supply. For the long-term benefit for all Nigeria, the administration of President Jonathan is actively carrying forward the critical goals of the Nigerian Gas Master Plan. Its three key strategies are to stimulate the multiplier effect of gas in the domestic economy, to position Nigeria competitively in high-value export markets, and to guarantee the long-term energy security of Nigeria. Some time ago, as we came in over the last uh, few months, we looked at the gas pricing regimes, gas to industry and gas to power with particular emphasis, of course, on gas to power. And this was to ensure that the suppliers of gas, the operators who supply the gas for the purposes of power, um, got an adequate cost regime that they were comfortable with and that would give them an adequate return on their investment. And they were very pleased with it. It has therefore ensured that we will be able to create sustainability in the supply of gas for power. And of course, that is critical. Underlying all that we do in this economy, because we must, of course, increase and stabilize our power supply. President Jonathan's team has overseen bold steps to lead gas reforms. Pricing from gas suppliers to wholesale and local distribution companies 
has been revised. The framework for a negotiated pricing arrangement between those companies and end-user manufacturing industries is being implemented. And new pricing arrangements will incentivize supply growth by the upstream suppliers, assuring availability of gas for the manufacturing sector. This, in turn, will create the platform for sustained economic growth in Nigeria. Our intention, of course, is to create a strategic framework to enable Nigerians really and truly begin to harness and enjoy the proceeds of the natural resource that is under their feet. Over the past year, under President Jonathan, the Ministry of Petroleum Resources has made great strides in implementing world-class bankable gas supply agreements for the Nigerian market. Negotiations for these agreements have progressed aggressively with the Power Holding Company of Nigeria and with the Niger Delta Power Holding Company of Nigeria. For the first time in history, created gas supply purchase agreements also to stabilize and ensure that the suppliers of gas had no hindrance whatsoever. We put in place securitization for these gas payments along with the World Bank which guarantees every supplier of gas that no matter what happens, they will be paid uh, for the gas that they supply. We have brought back confidence into the area of gas supply and sustainability. And the administration under President Jonathan is leading a major gas-based industrialization agenda for Nigeria. Binding agreements have been signed to build one world-scale petrochemical plant, two world-scale fertilizer plants, five fertilizer blending plants, a methanol plant, and a liquefied petroleum gas distribution plant. We have signed binding agreements with one of the major petrochemical plant entities in the world, Zenel of Saudi Arabia, to bring in a world-scale petrochemical plant to Nigeria the largest in sub-Saharan Africa. It will ensure that over the next two years, Nigeria becomes the West African hub for petrochemicals. You can only begin to imagine the impact this will have, not only on the economy of Nigeria, but on the economy of the West African region as a whole. As a result of these efforts in a remarkably short amount of time, gas production and supply in Nigeria is at an all-time high and achievements are being felt to change the landscape in the oil sector as well. Through refinery revitalization and domestic production of products, refineries in Wari, Kaduna and Port Harcourt are now operational. Well, as you know, traditionally we have had um, a lot of problems uh, with the refineries, which are quite old at this point in time. They are not actually at full capacity. They are at this time at 60% capacity utilization, which is actually the highest they have been in recent times. But we intend to take that a notch higher. And we already have in place a very robust program for full turnaround maintenance and refurbishment of the refineries. The current administration is also focusing efforts on major repairs in the country's infrastructure to allow the efficient transport and movement of oil. The increased availability of pipelines and reduced dependence on road trucking has activated previously idle depots in Ibadan, Ore, Ilori, Benin, Kano and Jos. A major achievement to date of the administrative team under President Jonathan has been the enactment within the past year of the first ever Nigerian Content Act to expand local capacity. In conjunction with the Act, the Governing Council of the Board was inaugurated by President Jonathan to give all Nigerians a hand in our own petroleum resources. All Nigerians should immediately go out and get a copy of the Nigerian Content Act and peruse it very closely because I have no doubt that there is something in it for every man and every woman, either directly or indirectly. The Nigerian Content Act is one of the most important pieces of legislation to have been promulgated into law in the oil and gas sector in recent times. 
And what will Nigeria's posture be in the world oil market? In October of 2010, Mrs. Diazani Allison Madweke led Nigeria's delegation to the 157th OPEC conference in Vienna, Austria. The occasion was truly a history-making event because Mrs. Allison Madweke was the first woman ever to lead a country's contingent at an OPEC conference since its formation five decades ago. I think that it, it, it's, it's a very humbling privilege for me, as it should be for anybody uh, who was put in that position. And I must give um, uh, the full uh, compliment uh, to Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan for being the first man in Nigeria as president uh, to see fit to actually position a woman at the helm of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. The oil and gas sector is a mainly male-dominated sector, and it has been for decades. But I do think that it brought a breath of fresh air into OPEC. At the news conference in Vienna, following the OPEC meetings, the Minister of Petroleum was refreshingly candid in answering questions regarding the road Nigeria has traveled toward oil production and stability at home. Uh, I'm sure you're aware that Nigeria has gone through a very dire period of militancy over the last few years. And um, embedded in that, uh, we've suffered a lot of integrity uh, losses uh, to our infrastructure and a number of our fields were obviously